Hey guys, welcome back to another Shapes.io video. I'm in the browser right now because I am in the alpha version, which is like a sandbox, as you can see by my hub right here. And today's video will be a basic introduction on wires. If you would like to gain access to the alpha mode, you need to join the Discord, and the link will be found in the description. Today, I'll be going over the basics of wires, starting off with explaining all the components, and later on going to some more complex functions. So let's hop right in. Firstly, to switch between layers, you press Y, but I've rebound that to tab because it's much more convenient for me. So for the wire layer, there are six main categories of components. There is the basic wire, which allows you to transmit a variety of signals. There are wire insulators, which allow you to place wires directly beside each other, or allow you to have crossing wire lines. There's the constant signal, which allows you to emit a signal of your choosing, which could be a zero, a one, a color, or a shape. Next, there are the logic gates, which include AND, NOT, XOR, OR, and the gate. Next, there's the button, which is quite simple. You press it, and it can either be on or off. And finally, there are the virtual shape manipulators, which I'll go over later. Now on the shapes layer, there are a few things that can either output a signal or take input signals, starting with the hub. The hub will output the current shape that it's requesting. As you can see, in this wire, it's, it's the current level shape. Next is storages. Storages will output the current thing it's storing into one side, and on the other side, it will output either a one if it's full, or a zero if it's not, meaning if there are 5,000 items in the storage, it will output one. Next, there are filters. Filters are a bit more complicated, and I'll talk about them later. But basically, they, they will filter out certain things depending on what you input into them. So if I input a zero, that means nothing will that means nothing will pass. But if I input a one, that means everything will pass. And finally, there are displays. Now displays are pretty simple. If display uh, is inputted a one, it will simply turn white. If it is inputted a color such as red, it will turn red. And finally, if it's inputted a, a shape such as the basic square, that's the code for the square, you will display the square. Now let's start with wires. Wires can transmit a variety of signals, such as empty, the two binary signals, meaning zero and one, a color signal, such as green, a shape signal, like this square, and also wires can conflict. And when, if a wire is conflicting, that means it has two different inputs onto it. So let's say we were inputting 0 and 1 onto the same wire, it will conflict because 0, it, counts, it actually counts as an output. It's an output of 0. A way to avoid these things is by using OR gates because now both of these are on different paths and it's connected to a gate, so it will, not, it will no longer conflict. Next, we have insulators. Insulators will allow you to do two things, either place wires next to each other. So if we have a input of 1 on this wire and 0 on this wire, we we'll take a display output, you'll see this one's on and this one's off. Normally, if you place two wires next to each other, they'll merge and become one wire. So that's the first use. And the wire tunnel, which is what it's called, allows you to cross lines. So we can have a line crossing this way, and a line crossing this way. Next, there are constant signals. As shown earlier, the constant signals can output four different things. Either the two binary signals, meaning zero or one. They can, or also, they can output a color, like white, or a shape. For shapes, you have to learn a shape code, or the, you can use a shape generator, which I'll link in the description. So let's say I wanted a square. So that's the shape code for a square. Basically, shape code is the first letter, the capital letter, represents the shape, which is R, so rectangle. And the second letter represents the color, so U stands for uncolored. So now we have four rectangles, which are uncolored. And that will output a square. Next, we have logic gates. I'll go over these briefly, because most people know them. Firstly, the AND gate. The AND gate will only output if both inputs are on. The NOT gate will output the opposite of what's being inputted. The XOR gate will only output if either of them on, but if both of them are on, it will not output. The OR gate will output if either of them on or if both of them are on. And finally, the gate. The gate will output 
what is being inputted into the bottom only if the side input is true. So if this side input is true, it'll output the red color. Next is buttons. They can either be zero or one, the two binary signals. Just make sure that when you have multiple buttons on a line, make sure you use OR gates to avoid conflicts. And finally, we have the virtual shape factories. These are very similar to the normal shape factories with some exceptions. First, we have the virtual cutter. This is very self-explanatory. It just cuts it and outputs it to both sides. We have the virtual rotator, which will simply rotate the shape. The virtual unstacker, this is a new one. It will take the, fir it will take the first layer and output it to the right side, the top layer, and the rest of it will be outputted to the left, as you can see. We have the shape analyzer, which will analyze the top right corner of the shape you input, and it will output the shape to the left, to the right side, and the color to the left side. And finally, we have the, the comparer. It will compare if two shapes are the identical. And if they are, it will output a one. Now with these components, you can make very simple systems, such as chaining a few gates together, or you could make very complex systems, such as large decoders, or perhaps a large display. However, the only practical shape use for these wires right now is what's known as an anything machine. An anything machine can produce any shape that is in the game simply by inputting what each corner, what each corner shape and color will be. And currently, since the hub outputs the current shape it's requesting, you can actually make an anything machine automatic using the filters. Now I'm back in my main world, and as you can see, I have made some pretty complex things, such as binary adders, some seven segment displays, we have binary decoders, some letter displays, and more. The most recent thing I'm working on is this grid display, which can display anything I, anything I choose to by using shape decoding. And if you want in future videos, I could explain these part by part so to give you a greater understanding on how they work. So let me know in the comments. Well, that's going to be it for this video. I hope this helped you understand the basics of wires. Make sure to tell me what you would like to see next video. If it's a decoder, or maybe you need help with something in the standalone, just tell me. Remember, the Discord link is in the description, and from there, you can gain access to the alpha and play around with the wires yourself. Subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you next time.